Good afternoon, South Africa, and welcome to Afternoon Express. My name is Danilo Aquisona. Very warm welcome to the weekend, the first one of spring, and the weather's already starting to transform into those summer vibes, so we're very excited. Today in the loft, we're celebrating the brand new series on SABC3, Rurio Futa. We've got some of the cast members joining us today to chat more about it. It starts every Wednesday at 8 p.m., and it's almost pretty much brand new, but if you're a big fan, make sure you stay tuned to the show today. Plus, if you love to have a really cool drink getting ready for summer, but aren't a big fan of alcohol, we have SA's top barman joining us in the loft today, making us a beautiful mocktail. Joining me in the loft today is the beautiful Bonnie Mbuli. Thank you, Danila. Good afternoon. I'm Bonnie Mbuli, of course. It's a spring kitchen. Did you see what I did there? Anyway. <laughs> and joining me in the kitchen is none other than our favorite chef and food stylist, Claire Wynn Stanley. Hello, hello, Claire. Hello. We're making a main course and a dessert today. And I'm going to let you do the honors and actually say it because long. Yeah, it's kind of okay. a delicious mouthful. Mm -hmm. So, well, a sort of more of a brunch sort of thing for the mm -hmm. weekend. So, mm -hmm. a Broccoli, chicken sausage, and feta frittata, a firm favorite of yeah, mine, absolute yeah, favorite. Yeah. And then something chocolatey, you'll find out what that one is later. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely will. But for now, let's head back into the couch with our first guest, Danilo. Yes, it's only been on air for a little more than a month on SABC3, but Rurio Futa, a drama series about a talented young dancer who starts a new life in the forgotten Karoo town of Verluren, has already made waves across South Africa. Joining us on the couch is the talented actor, dancer, singer, who plays the lead character, Dylan Praturius. It's Marnu van der Merwe. Marnu, welcome to The Loft. Thank you very, very much. Now Great listen, dude, I must ask you, because I've been reading a lot about your background in the past. First of all, your gun license, Horse riding. <laughs> Have you always like wanted to become a cowboy? Has that like been the big dream? Well, I think the thing is actually my father is the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> he's the real deal. I grew up having to uh, look after <laughs> these cattle on a horse. Yeah. You know, so it's. It was just one of those things. So did he have this big dream for his son becoming this macho, you uh, sort of like a, a cowboy, and then you ended up like, no, daddy, I want to dance I and sing. I want to dance. I want to sing. <laughs> no, actually, actually, I was, I was all in it. I was, I was uh, gonna play rugby. You know, yeah. that was, that was, that was the, that was the thing I was gonna do. That was what I loved. Uh, I only realized that I may have some talent for for dance and acting and singing, almost after school, mm. um, when the rugby dream was gone. So. <laughs> When you realized that the beer got to you and that there was no more dancing going there on. There was no more. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about actually that shift into the sort of dancing career. Because you obviously were, you were very talented at your rugby. You made your first uh, provincially as well. So you were very talented at what you were doing there. Where did the shift happen? How did you start getting exposed to this industry if you were so entrenched in that, in that community? Well, I've got to say this. My father being a cowboy, my mm. mother was a music teacher. Okay, so still so, sort of music. So kind of always heard music and knew about music and, and, mm. and uh, played in the church band as most mm. boys do, you know, um, drumming. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, after school, I took like a gap year and uh, they put me on stage and they said, listen, okay, now you've got to do, you do some steps mm -hmm. and you've got to sing a bit and you've got to act. And I said, no, 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 it's, it's fine. <laughs> I'll just... I'll hang around the, the boys, yeah, the back <laughs> And uh, it kind of took off, gave me the lead role, and for a year I did, you know, I was on stage, I was acting, and I was singing, and, and sure. fell in love with it. Because mm. uh, you're, you're the typical triple threat. I mean, you've got so much going for you. You've been involved in stage production, series, movies. You've really made your way around the industry uh, in yeah. such a short space of time, which has been incredible. Where's the love? Where's the, the first love? Look, where, where I started was singing. I started singing okay. in pubs as I, when I came to Pretoria from Rustenburg, a Rustenburg boy, came mm -hmm. to Pretoria. And I started singing in pubs. Um, and I realized to just sing in pubs for 15 years and then maybe make it, as you would mm. call it, that's a little boring. Yeah. You know, you've got to do, you got to expand. Yeah. Especially in South Africa, you've got to do everything that you possibly can. Yeah, I've spoken like a true businessman in the industry, but every actor that I've spoken to, my cousin being one of them, they all know where their first love lies. It's always yeah. like, you know, I love theater, but I do yes. film for the money. Or yes. I really love a film, but I'm doing series because it's like a new experience for me. What is your first love? Because you said it's dance and a bit of singing was yeah. the thing that you like to do. It's but... actually, it's a very hard question for me. Um, but I would have to say singing. Okay. I would have to say it comes all back singing so yeah. yeah so let's talk about your career up until this point because i really want to get into your new role at uh, rurio futa mm. um, and all these other big shows that you've been involved with talk us through that journey and that process and and how you've really just sort of dived into this industry well i started playing a, a soldier mm. in in the hope the musical standing mm. for two hours <laughs> with a helmet on my head you couldn't even recognize my face sweat dripping down the side yeah, yeah that's where i started uh, nobody even knew i was in the show yeah 
Um, and from there it became, you know, did some barnyard and, and, and so forth. I think the big thing was Pretful was mm. a, a movie that I made that I was one of the leads in, which was Triple Threat, which was dancing yes. act all the way, hectic mm. dancing and, and, and everything. And then Rio Futa, which oh, after like it's been three to four years since I've actually danced, mm -hmm. and now I got to do this big dance. Again. Role. I was like, oh my word. <laughs> but it must have been a huge honor, obviously, for you being accepted as the lead uh, and being asked to come and play such a huge role in the series. Why did you choose to say yes? What was it about the story that I think uh, that caught you? Look, let me start by I got the audition brief and I didn't want to go. I said, listen, I'm. I'm taking the year off of acting, I'm gonna sing. I'm, sure. I've been busy with my album for two years, I just can't finish it. <laughs> um, and I said, no, I'm not gonna go for it. And uh, about two weeks later, they phoned me again, said, listen, do you wanna come in for it? Mm -hmm. I said, okay, well, let's go. Went in for it, and uh, then I heard about the story from Justin. He actually told me the, the crux of the story, the character, what he's gonna go through, you know. And, and, and that was something I wanted to play. He goes through leaps and bounds, this character. Yeah. I mean, what, what are some of those journeys that he goes through? Are we not allowed to know yet? Is it all coming? Yeah, actually, <laughs> I actually can't, can't say too much, but mm. um, prepare to be, to be thrown and, and, and blown. He just goes, you know. All over the place. A little bit of, little bit of everything. Yeah. yeah. And the future for you in terms of your career, because this is going to be a series that's going to be on for a while. I think you've still got a whole bunch of episodes still to be aired. You're busy working on a film at the moment. Mm. Uh, what is the future holding for Marnu? That is a good question. Uh, I have, uh, I'm acting till March next year, fully booked. Um, then I really want to finish my album. Please. Please. Get it out there. Uh, and, then, and, then, and then explore roles I've always wanted to just plays like roles that, that, is, that is attractive to me at that mm. point. You know, things mm. that challenges me mm -hmm. um, and that helps me grow. Mm. Um, everything that I've done, I haven't presented, so yeah. maybe... Oh, he's coming oh, for my job. Oh, he's coming oh, for my job. job. Uh, obviously, you're a very blessed actor. You've had a lot of work on your plate. Um, is, is there a role that you've always wanted to accept? Is there something that you've always wanted to be in um, that would be like the dream job? That is very interesting that you're saying that. I, I've always wanted to... Don't say Afternoon Express. I've always wanted to be set. on Afternoon Express. <laughs> um, I've always wanted to play... Uh, I've always wanted to be uh, in like a period piece, you know, yes. way back. Wow. Like a Boer War film. Mm. I always wanted to be a, play a rugby film, mm. you know, because of the rugby background. And uh, Gertrude Rugby... Uh, doesn't You've missed Invictus. Rugby. Invictus is done, I've sorry. I've missed friend. Invictus. Yeah, so. I've missed Gertrude <laughs> Rugby. Um, and, uh, but there's a, there's, a, there's a new thing coming out that I actually uh, got a part in which I'm doing both of it. Amazing. So it just happened and it, it, that's very cool. What a blessing. Um, so new dreams, new things. Excited. Awesome, dude. Marino, excited. we're very, very proud of you. So welcome to SABC3 family. We're very Thank excited you. to have you part of the team. It's great to be a part of this. And thanks for coming to visit us at Afternoon Express. Thanks, dude. Now, South Africa, after the break, I get cooking in the kitchen and we continue our celebration of Rurio Futa with lead actress Nicole Fortain. Don't go anywhere. Fresh pack. Goodness comes naturally. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, South Africa. So in the kitchen today, myself and Claire Winstanley are going to be making a frittata. Now, this is something I've never done before. All I've managed to do in my life is make an omelette, and I've only ever once managed to make my omelette so that perfectly so that it flips exactly right. But so the crazy thing is that if you've made an omelette and you haven't made a frittata, frittatas are so much easier to make really? than an omelette. Absolutely. You just put it in the pan, leave it, done. Prove it to me, let's go. Okay, so we are going, okay, firstly what we've done is we, we've roasted some of the broccoli. Yes. Just in a hot oven, 200 degrees, until it starts to char on the edge mm, there. So that's part of the Woolworths Daily Difference this week, so an easy Lovely. one to go and grab in store. And we are just going to caramelize some of our red onions. I often choose red onions, as I'm sure you know, just because Sweeter. I love the sweetness, yes. exactly. And the color, the color's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Medium heat, and for this right now, we're just looking for a little bit of color, a little bit of soft, a softer onion, and then we're gonna start adding the rest of our ingredients, which are eggs. You can okay. whisk those up. So we've got, I like to sort of use one to two eggs per person. So I like my frittata to be quite eggy, yes. um, just because it's, it's breakfast. It's thicker and it's a lot, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot more my, meaty. This, this is a breakfast, so you want it to be nice and eggy. So that, that's roughly about eight to ten eggs. So we're going to feed everyone in the loft today. Yay! Um, so our onions are, are getting along nicely. Do you season the actual batter? Well, the actual eggs itself. Absolutely. The... Okay. You Soon. can add the cream, and I'm going to 
add some salt and pepper. So you're looking for a nice, rich breakfast. You can substitute it out for milk, but just be mindful of the, the amount mm. because it's obviously going to be a bit more watery. Um, that's looking great. So I'm going to take our... We've got a, a chicken and uh, spinach and feta mm. sausage, but we've and just... Have you pre-grilled those, hey? We've just popped these in a pan, hot in pan, pan. Okay. cooked them up because it's not going to have time to cook really yes. in the oven. So you want to put your, your protein that you're adding, you want it cooked inside there. Ah. So you can add also chorizo. Oh, that is my favorite. And last time I was, remember being ridiculed for calling chorizo an Italian an Italian oh. sausage when I actually... You're never going to live that one down in my book. Never going to live books. that down ever again, no. <laughs> okay, so just cranking up the heat a little bit there. Okay, now what you're going to do firstly is pass cool. me the broccoli, please. Thank you kindly. Sure. And then you're going to add the chives into this mix. So you can take a long time and... Chop, chop, chop. Chop, 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 but use scissors. Okay. It really is quite quick and, and simple trick. tip in the kitchen. And as long as you've got clean into kitchen here? scissors, snip it into your batter, into your mix, and it just makes for a much simpler Easy recipe. Easy way. Like that. that. Okay. okay, so we're slowly just kind of piling up our pan here. I forgot to mention that you need to have an oven-proof pan. This is going to go into the oven. Oh, so if you want done. to pour that in to our pan. This is like a really busy pan. But you want to. You want every bite needs to be full of your ingredients. It's a nice chunky frit uh, frittata you create. Definitely. Yeah. The cool thing about a frittata, it's a base. You yes. can add anything, anything you to want it. to it. Cool. And some, some feta to finish that off. So the important part now with a frittata is to let it slowly start to cook and catch on the bottom. Mm -hmm. What what's that, that is doing is browning the base. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get really fancy and flip it out later at the table, it's going to be nice and golden on the bottom, which is now the top. Yeah. But how you know is you see the edges of the egg slowly start to kind of cook yes. and then you know you're getting to the right stage to pop it in the oven. Okay. Into an oven at about 180 degrees until you're just looking for the center of the egg to not wobble so that you've got a nice sort of well done egg hmm. and everyone will be happy. Simple and easy. I love it so much Claire, thank you so much. This goes into the oven now for the next 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, no, we'll probably go for about 15-20 minutes. 15-20 minutes. minutes. Alright, so we'll be right back though. Bonnie is standing around the couch now with Nicole Fortain in the meantime. <laughs> She's an actress and a dancer and a young star on the rise. Joining us on the couch is the lead cast member opposite Manu, Nicole Fontaine. Welcome, Nicole. Thank you, Bonnie. It's good to now, be when you were in primary school, you um, brought uh, pictures of yourself <laughs> and assigned pictures of yourself and gave yes. them, handed them out and said to everyone, keep this because it'll be really valuable <laughs> in the future. What had gotten into you? I don't know. I don't know. At that point, I hadn't even discovered acting yet. Yeah. But um, I decided it was the last day of, of grade seven uh -huh. to um, print A4 size photos of myself and sign it wow. and hand it out. Yeah. And look at you now. You're well on your way <laughs> yes. to big stardom. Well, mm -hmm. you know what? I can totally relate to that because when I used to sign your books in high school, I used to sign Stick With Me and I'll Make You Famous. And, okay. I, and I didn't even know okay. what I was talking about. So it's not about. that bad. Look at us now. Yes. Cool. <laughs> awesome. So you star in Rurio Futa. You play Marika. Yes, Tell I us do. about that role. Um, Marika is feisty, mm -hmm. uh, loyal. She's a dance teacher. Um, she works in the dance club that um, Marno's character Dylan comes to, who's, okay. his dad owns it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, she loves her family, uh, she's quite opinionated and strong. It's been a joy to play her. Do you find you're quite drawn to strong female characters? Yes, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think I am. Um, this is obviously the first TV role I've, I've ever well had. Well done. And, um, mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so, I haven't had the luxury of choosing, right. but I mean, it's a wonderful first character to me. Now, you did really well at Varsity. You went to UCT and you were yes. in the um, Golden Key... What's it called? Uh, Golden International Key. Society of Golden Key. Society, right? Yes. Um, which is comprised of the top 15% performers in the university. Yes. You could have done anything you wanted to do <laughs> with those marks, but you chose the arts. Why? I love it. Yeah. I, I genuinely yeah. love it. Um, and I think there's room for intelligent people in the arts as well. Is I there? Mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. I mean, sometimes it doesn't seem like it, but there really is. Yeah. And um, yeah. Um, I've always been quite the nerd, but I've enjoyed it. I love what I do. Mm -hmm. What, what I did you enjoy most about shooting the series? Um, there was just a lot to learn. Yeah. I think after drama school, which we focused on theatre a lot, um, coming into the TV, TV industry was quite a big step. 
So I had a lot to learn and I was always okay. learning all the time. Right. Um, yeah. And then getting to dance and act in one series. Yeah. It's yeah. quite amazing. Speaking of getting into the whole TV world, was there mm -hmm. anything about it that you found really surprising or shocking? Um, I think how calm and collected a lot of the older actors are, like Ilsa Klink, um, she became like an actual sister. She plays Tamara in the series. Um, Greta Fox, David James, they're all quite down to earth people yeah. who you can talk to and connect with. Yeah. And that was, that was surprising. I thought, you know, people would quite be, be quite standoffish, yeah. but not at all. So you've received more support than you imagined that yes, you would. Yes, especially That's from wonderful. actors and, and the crew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, you're urgently uh, preparing to play the key uh, lead in uh, the pantomime yes. Sleeping Beauty. Yes. <laughs> and what, what is the preparation involving? Um, singing lessons. Um, wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also, I'm dancing as, as usual. Right. Um, I think it, it will be my first actual musical theatre pantomime ever. Right. And to step into the So you the don't needle. sleep the whole um, time? Well, no. To be honest, now I'm sleeping. Um, I mean, I'm sleeping beauty. Oh, no. No, okay. <laughs> no, not at all, no. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of dancing. We right. start our rehearsals next month. The sky's the limit for you now. What does the future hold for you? What is <sighs> your biggest dream? I have lots, I have lots of dreams. Mm -hmm. I really want to play an action hero at some point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'd like to buy a house. Yes. Um, I don't know why it's been a fantasy of mine. I mean, I'm 23, but I want a house of my own. Yeah, um, I think that's a very sensible dream. You know, you know yeah. I like it. <laughs> well, we're very proud of you here at Afternoon Express. Thank and we you wish so you much. all the best going forward. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> After the break, we continue our conversation with the cast of Julio Futa. And don't forget to enter our Go Green SMS competition. All the information you need on this week's question is available on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Here's a reminder of that amazing grand prize you stand a chance of winning. We'll be right back. The Afternoon Express team is going green. Join us every Tuesday at 4 p.m. until September as we bring you the most innovative trends in sustainable fashion, food, decor and design, as well as handy tips to help you reduce your carbon footprint. Answer our Go Green question every Tuesday and stand a chance to win a thousand Rand Woolies gift card every week. Plus, simply by entering, you also go into the big draw for the ultimate grand prize worth over half a million rand. Including a dream sustainable kitchen makeover from Cordev fitted with Bosch appliances with 300,000 rand. Also, up to 250,000 rand worth of home upgrades so you can live off the grid. Plus, food and homeware from Woolworths valued at 75,000 rand and a 25,000 rand towards a school of your choice with my school. So, go big! Go green with Afternoon Express every Tuesday at 4 p.m. to win these amazing prizes. Willies and I collaborating to raise 100 million rand through the My School program. Are you with us? Welcome back. Now make sure you catch the next episode of Winner Home Design Edition tonight at 7.30 on SABC3. The contestants have chosen their teams and the competition is heating up. Tonight they take on the master bedroom, so it should be very, very interesting. In the meantime, though, we're back on the couch with Marno and Nicole. And joining us are two hot young South African stars and supporting cast members of Rurio Futa, Busi Mchali, as well as Nicholas Nkuna. Welcome to the show, guys. First of all, we haven't had a chance to chat to you two yet. Let's talk about your characters in the series. Uh, what kind of role do you guys play? Because you seem very in love in real life too. Well, I mean, Dawn and Shakes are like a, a, a cowpon on the show. Um, really kind of crazy, um, exciting kind of mm. love story between the two of them. Um, their entire story is based around trying to create a better life for themselves mm. and getting out of this like little town. Mm. Um, and they literally are willing to do anything, anything. and everything everything. Because this series has got so much drama in it. I'm really intrigued to see where your characters go because we've had a lot of real intriguing stuff already going on and I want to see what happens to your characters as you move forward because you've got that cheeky smile which is I know something goes on in this relationship at some point. Uh, your background though in sort of this industry, how did you break into Rurio Futa? I auditioned, hey, mm. like any hustling artist, actor, mm. it was a, an audition kind of thing, but I did I do have a drama background, mm -hmm. so I did do the whole drama thing for four years and kind of found an agency and mm. 
Just the life of auditions all day, every day. Sure. So this is the first big break in terms of a national series. No. That's Okay. So what is no, the no. big, the biggest break that you think you've had so far? Um, I, I, I've got a movie that's out in cinemas at the moment called Tina Sobabili. Yes. Um, it's won two international awards and one South African oh. award. So I, that, that's my current break. Sure. That deserves a round of applause. That's amazing. It's very, very exciting. There's so much talent in our country and it is starting to bloom. A lot more of these uh, feature films are coming out. A lot more of these incredible series with very intriguing storylines are coming out at the moment. So it's actually very, very exciting. Nick, yourself? Hi, how are you? Very well. I'm well. The what shirt is what nice. do you want to know? Thank you so much. I want to know about your background. I want to know how you got into this one. That's his shirt. He brought that shirt. Yeah, I, yeah, I wasn't going to say anything, <laughs> but I'm just worried that if he does this, like, I'm just going to open up and we'll just... It's, it's fine. I, yeah. I go I gym. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, I, well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of fresh in the TV industry in mm. South Africa. I returned from the UK. I was playing Sim and the Lion King. Yes. And, I, and, and I, before I left, I was actually staring at, I was in the Phantom of the Opera. I actually lived here for seven months in Cape Town. Sure. So I, we're coming here and driving around. I was like, oh yeah, I remember all I these remember places. I remember that. Yeah. That's where you used to and go and stuff. party. Yeah. That's where, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah, I, I, it's just international theater shows. Then yeah. returning, I was just like, my big TV you know, break in was mm. uh, Skim Sam. Yes. So I've been, yeah, I'm shooting that at the moment. And other things, and a few things. It's been six months in the country, sure. so six things have been going great. And I'll now Rio Food Day, yeah. I asked Marno what yeah. his uh, sort of love was because, I mean, a lot of actors have their one thing. It's either stage or it's singing or it's dancing or mm -hmm. it's whatever. What would you say your one is? I mean, without even thinking about it, it's theatre. Is it theatre? Yeah. It's so why did thespians get into series? Why are you stealing all of the actors' jobs that want to do TV series? No, no, it's not that. When you're an, <laughs> <laughs> when you're an actor, you're university. When you're an actor, you must do everything. <laughs> I mean, I also sing. So besides, besides that, I think when you're an actor, uh, besides theatre, I wanted to try mm. something different. Yeah. You know, I'm still young. I'm, you know, I'm 27. I want to do different things. Yeah. When I'm 40, I can say, actually, I've experienced each and every single thing in the industry. Now I can be picky. Yeah, I can't just, you know, mm. focus on one thing. It gets boring sometimes. Mm. You're young, you got to try things out, travel the world, yeah. do this and that. Yeah. Buy a cool. house. Buy a house. <laughs> Buy a house. At some point, yeah, with a huge bond and it never paid off and live, end up living in the Karoo for real. Uh, let's talk about your guys' uh, series itself and your relationship with each other. A lot of love stories going on, but also a lot of real drama. What, is the, what have we revealed so far in this series and what's still to come from your relationship uh, as two different couples? <laughs> well, they actually kind of enter a little bit later. Yes, they haven't they been do. seen yet. Mm -hmm. And they're in yes. a relationship when they do enter. Okay. Whereas um, our characters are not. They form their relationship. Maybe they do. Or maybe they don't. <laughs> they do. <laughs> are they not in a relationship by that time? No. Well, episode we been episode, in episode up four up is, um, I think, next week. Ooh. Yes. And there's a lot anyway. of drama involved in that one. Lots but that tells you already, you know, it's like... Yeah. Yeah. It's what was life like living on a very, very small town, like living in the Karua, first of all, with not much around you guys? The series filmed for quite a period of time. And obviously, you bond quite a lot there. What was the whole environment like in the Karua? Um, we were only in Philippolis uh, mm. for, I think, what, three weeks in, in, in its entirety mm. of when we were shooting. Um, yeah. Most of the time we were shooting in Hartebeersport, mm. which is an hour drive out of, out of Johannesburg, mm. which is quite taxing when yes. you're driving in for an hour, shooting the whole day and then driving yes. back for an hour. No. Um, mm. But I mean, it, it, it gave us, I think, an essence of, of what the characters were living in, mm. the kind of environment, small dry, um, mm. small community, being with the same people for... Mm a long yeah. period of time. It was a, it was, it was a very re relaxing period of time for me, uh, personally. It was, mm. you know, it was, a, it was a good, I had a good time. Mm. Going there, I thought, oh, you know, going to, to, to Philippoulos, there's nothing there for mm. three mm. weeks. What are you going to do with yourself all the time when you're not shooting and, and yeah. so on? Yeah. But it, it, it ended up being very good for, yeah. for me and I think for everybody. Yeah, yeah. I agree. We'll I mean, see. we didn't have electricity and water <laughs> on some days. Most but days. I mean... <laughs> so, most days. We're seeing you two in sort of like the friendship you guys have built must have created quite a, quite a cool community around this for the series. Uh, when you guys broke up after the whole series had finished and had wrapped for its first season, um, was it quite a sad moment for you guys? Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think with every set, and yeah. I mean with, 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 with any working kind mm. of environment, mm. there are people that you go, go really fond of and really close to, and then other people that are just merely colleagues. Mm. So it, yeah. was, mm -hmm. it was sad to say goodbye to certain people. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody, I'm not going to lie and say it was so sad to say bye to everybody. <laughs> 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 no. We know some directors. You know, for me, it was, it was very sad. <laughs> I think also because I stay in Cape Town mm. and I moved up to Joburg in March. Yeah. So um, being there on my own, 
kind of going, um, doing the TV mm. series was kind of... Daunting. Became, yes, mm. daunting. And, and the support that I got from people, I mean, it really helped me mm. through, through, through it. I just so have I, to, sorry, uh -huh. I have to interrupt her and say that being very green in the industry, mm. she was very, very professional throughout the whole thing. Oh, thank she you. worked so very Should hard. We all hold hands and cool. We, we, we have to now <laughs> just take a moment for her. No, but, but seriously, and that's yeah. why everybody took to her mm. as well. You know, because she kind of helped awesome. everybody with with her talent as well. Sure. Yeah. Nice. I know. Pleasure, I know that just before we let you guys go, we're going to be playing a little bit of a game later on. But your your music. Yes. Yes, sir. You're releasing an album. Yes, soon. Tell me more about very it. Very soon. I. Well, I've started working on it in the UK, but I finished up with Chris J. Actually, that worked with, oh, with Donald, yes. worked with um, Euphonic, worked with so many like great artists, almost mm. everybody in the industry. So I came back. I was actually launching last night, yes, and she was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big. yeah just launching my music in the South African scene. But yeah, we're coming out. Album is coming out. Just two, three weeks will be out. Can we have a performance? Yes, you will. Oh, amazing! Awesome. Yeah, yes, you will. Okay, well, the cast of Ruru Futo are joining us in the loft today. They are not going anywhere right now, though. We're making a mocktail in the kitchen with Bonnie and our bartender. Joining me here in the kitchen is Haroon Hafiji, who is a top bartender and an expert in the field of mixology. He's been in the industry for 17 years and will also be representing our country as a world-class ambassador at the Bartender of the Year competition held in Cape Town, where the winner will be announced tonight. He's here to make us an awesome signature non-alcoholic cocktail. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you very much, Bonnie. Thanks for having awesome. me. Awesome. So Excellent. where Lovely. do we start? Well, we're making a, a, a bit of a take on a chocolate orange martini. Okay. Uh, and I've used some beautiful ingredients that I'm going to put together in my shaker. Uh, the first ingredient is a little bit of espresso. Right. So it's a nice little drink to, to get you going in the morning. Wake Chocolate, you up. orange, and yeah. a little bit of uh, espresso. Uh -huh. Hopefully it'll get you through this weekend in one piece. <laughs> uh, the next uh, ingredient I'm using is a homemade chocolate syrup. So essentially mm -hmm. it's a bit of chocolate uh, infused, with, uh, infused with sugar right. and a little bit of water as well. And right. I'm doing about 30 ml of that. Okay. So that's going to give it a lovely little chocolate flavor yeah. and sweeten up that, uh, that slightly bitter espresso. Wow. To balance off against that lovely homemade chocolate syrup, I'm using a touch of fresh lemon juice. Yes. Just a little splash of that lemon juice just to freshen it up a little bit, about 12.5 okay. ml. Okay. Lovely. Now, you were placed second in the world-class cocktail competition twice yeah. in 2013 and 2014. Yes, that is correct. Uh, wow, I'll, I'll... so what does it take to compete at that level as opposed to just making a cocktail? Well, I think to get to that particular level, aside from just being a really great bartender, yeah. you have to go the extra mile. It takes a lot of hard work, it takes a lot of dedication, and a lot of personal time. The stuff you do at world class is not something you can practice in your normal working hours behind the bar. Mm. So you're going to have to spend some time at home, a little bit of research, yeah. a little bit of practice, try to break down all of your ingredients and your methods until you get the perfect cocktail that you're mm. looking for. So Cape Town is hosting the global finals. Why do you think Cape Town was particularly chosen to do this? Uh, I think Cape Town is an absolutely great city for us to actually have the, the world-class global yeah. finals. I'm, it makes me so unbelievably proud for it to come to our hometown. I think it's a great city. It uh, has absolutely great facilities for all international travelers. Right. And to actually have these 55 countries come to our, back, uh, to our, back, to our home ground is mm -hmm. just absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, and that's and what a beautiful day we're having as well right. today. <laughs> Excellent. Ciao. And the finalists in the competition, what kind of stuff did they have to go through? What are some of the challenges they experienced during the well, competition? Well, uh, there's a, a few different challenges, but for me, the one that really uh, sets apart the men from the boys Yes, there are, of course, female bartenders in the competition yes, as well. Yes, there are. Yes, there are this year. Uh, cocktails Against the Clock, essentially, you're making 10 cocktails in 10 minutes. All of them have to be original creations. A cocktail creations. a minute. A cocktail a minute, basically. Wow. Uh, but the way you do it as well is you shouldn't be putting one drink, second, third, fourth, uh -huh, fifth. Uh -huh. You should, at the end, kind of present all 10 drinks at the same wow. time. So the making of it has to be quite creative as well. 100%. And you 100%. mentioned that women are participating. There's yes. six specifically who are participating of yes, the 55 correct. countries. 100%. Wow. I think women are really sort of showing themselves as being more than capable yeah. of taking down the guys. And I, I honestly cannot wait <laughs> until there's a global final when a lady takes it. I mean, Certainly. as it is at the moment, uh, the representatives from within their countries, uh -huh. uh, if, you, if it's a lady who's won their national competition, that yeah. in itself is such an amazing honour. Yes. So you've already made it, you know, so <laughs> there you go. That's awesome, cool. 100%. So should we continue with yeah, so we finished with the cocktail, so I've put all of the ingredients. The mm -hmm. last bit was a little bit of uh, a vanilla paste. Okay. So we've got some lovely vanilla coffee, paste. chocolate, a little bit of lemon, a little bit of vanilla, vanilla? paste. Okay. All of the ingredients are in there. Now all you need to do is ice up the drink and shake okay. it. Cool, so wow. I was going to sure. turn to the side and grab some ice. All right. 
And what I've done in the meantime, uh, before I started, was I actually chilled my glass. Always important to have the glass nice and cold. Okay. So that your cocktail stays at the right temperature. Right. So we've iced up the shaker. We're just gonna give it a nice solid shake. Here we go. As you can see, nice and cold. So for those people wanting to not have a non-alcoholic cocktail, right. what could they add? I would say with this particular drink, the best thing to do is vodka. Mm -hmm. Excellent uh, excellent sort of choice for these sort of flavors. Okay, wonderful. Lovely, I'm just gonna check out that ice that kept the glass nice and cold. And I'm gonna strain out this drink. This is a little uh, piece of equipment we call a Hawthorne strainer. Wow. And we've got a fine strainer which holds back all the little sort of pieces and and as you can see, this drink is sort of pouring a little bit of a foam on top, and that's actually because of the espresso coffee. Yes. That actually uh, works really, really well to bring all of the cocktail ingredients together. And of course, you shook it, it look... quite hard enough. Yep. Yeah. So that aerates it and it creates that beautiful espresso top that we actually got in this drink. Cool. Very important for cocktails to finish off is a bit of a garnish, which I'm going to do for this one. Right. Uh, I'm going to. I called it a chocolate orange martini, but I'm sure you noticed there's no orange in it as yet. Yes. So I'm going to finish it off with orange, and I'm going to use the oils that are present on the back of an orange peel. Mm. And I'm going to actually flame them over the drink, so you get a nice sort of refreshing burnt orange uh -huh, note. Mm -hmm. This is so fascinating. There we wow! Go. <laughs> so if you smell that now, mm. you've got a lovely orange note, yeah. uh, and, and it doesn't Sexy stop there, smell. doesn't stop there. Mm -hmm. We're just going to finish off a little bit of garnish, so that same uh, orange note, a little that bit of so orange, pretty. and then a little bit of mint bit as of well. Mint. So I'm just going to rub the glass slightly with a bit of fresh mint, place it on top, and if you smell that now, you'll get a little bit of that lovely mint that's coming through. Wow, it changes it completely. And then finally, for the little flourish, okay. to reinforce that orange note that is on top of the drink, here I've got some dry ice, and I've got an orange essence, which I'm gonna pour over the dry okay. ice, and that'll okay. create an orange-scented smoke, which you can enjoy while you drink the cocktail. So you basically breathe in the orange, and you taste the rest in the drink itself. Wow, this is definitely a fine art, eh? Oh. There we go. So if you smell that smoke, Do you look at that. It's that beautiful orange that's mm. coming through. Yes. And there you go, a non-alcoholic chocolate orange martini. Can I taste it? Of course you can. Please okay, go ahead. Awesome. Well, okay. While I taste this, let's take a break. And when we come back, the cast of Who Your Footer take each other on in a dance-off. Cheers. <laughs> Any occasion, any time. Nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. It's been a fun afternoon and from what we have learned, the cast members of Rurio Futa love to dance. Now the question is, how good are they actually? A true dancer should be able to do any style of dance to any style of music. So we've set up a little bit of a competition and our Rurio Futa cast members are going to be put to the test. Now guys, we've put you into your two teams, the two couples in this series. What you guys are going to have to do is... Yeah, kind of. I know there's a love story, a separate love story later on between you two, but <laughs> before we keep it up to episode four, yeah. we'll just keep it, you know, as it is now. We've got a dance, uh, well, music genre style in our little, what's this thing called? Ballet shoe. Ballet shoe. That's as simple as that, just a ballet shoe. Not a pointer <laughs> or a, like a tee -tee no. or something like no. a tutu with a tee -tee. Oh, yeah. I, Who knows? And then out of your super cool, like, hip-hop dance style shoe, you guys can pick up your dance genre, okay? okay. So what you guys are going to have to do is shoes a category. <laughs> uh, we'll let you guys go first, because you were... Uh... So we go Hua. Okay, so that's your dance, your music style, which is? Oh, you do want to know? Read it to us, yeah, of course. <laughs> Old school rap. Old school rap oh. is your music style, and your dance style is. Sweaty! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can give those off to me. I'm gonna give you guys 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Are you ready? You can take your positions in the middle of the dance floor. Oh, and the yes. shoe. Oh, okay. Just quickly say who taught you how to twerk? Come on, baby. Your 10 seconds starts in three, two, one, and go. Mm. Mm. <laughs> 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 
10 seconds isn't done. It's work, Nick. It's work. It's work. The I technique is a bit slacking yeah. from your side there. Give yeah. a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too sure about the technique oh. on that one there. I'm not too sure. <laughs> now I'm nervous. You guys, you guys out there can go into Facebook and into Twitter and tell us what you think of their performances. <laughs> Ooh, Marno and Nicole, no pressure. No, what nervous. is your music style? Now I am nervous. <laughs> what is it? Hip hop track. Hip hop track? Okay, Dancing cool. too? Ballet. 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 Take your positions. Yes. Give this to me. Take your positions, hip hop, and you guys are dancing ballet, ballet twirls. Can oh, I bring them together? Three, two, one, and go. <laughs> That's not a twirl, that's a PA. Keep going, keep going. Ballet twirl. That's your 10 seconds done. That was nine seconds. That was okay, it was okay. I'm gonna let you guys redeem yourselves. Let you guys redeem yourselves one more round. Okay, choose a music style. Because you guys weren't so good at your last one, I'll let you choose prior to the time, so get your choosing. What music genre did you guys get and dance style? French cabaret. French cabaret and? Soki dancing. Soki dancing! Oh All right. French cabaret, soki dancing, no lessons. No, no. Three, two, one, and go. <laughs> <laughs> soki, guys, soki. Soki, that's soki. Soki, lang adam, yeah. Wow. It works. <laughs> Nia, that's not soki, that is. That is cheating. Oh, yes. yeah, just was just. <laughs> Oh gosh, let me just show you. Well done. Let me, let, me just show you, let me just show you. Let me just show you. It's like, it's like this. He does it all the time. There he goes. There he goes. <laughs> well done, well done. Uh, anyway, sorry, sorry. Okay, your guys' turn. What genres did you get music wise? Bollywood, Bollywood. Bollywood dance, uh, Dolly, Bollywood music and so dance. Something style? that I've never heard of before? Voguing. Yes. Voguing. Oh, okay, that's amazing. Take yes. your position. No, this should be fun. So that kind of thing, okay. You, Three, you drop down, two, okay, one, yes. and go. That's, cool. that's a cool one. That's a cool one. Voguing, Vogue, Vogue, uh, yeah, 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 Vogue, oh, mm. uh, uh, uh. String, cool, come on. No, it's like, oh, she's serious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen of South Africa, what you can go do is go into Facebook and go into Twitter and tell us which performance you thought was better between our two couples here from Rio, Rurio Futa. You guys are legends, man. I love you so, so, so much. Besides their sweet performances, we're making something super sweet in the kitchen. Now, a few weeks ago, we asked you to send us your suggestions for a lint creation chocolate. The entries were astounding. And after much deliberation and chocolate dreaming, we chose a winner. And the winner is a caramel apple crumble creation, not for the faint-hearted, proposed by Suvarna Naika. Today, Claire will be making a dessert inspired by this creation. Claire, it's quite a mouthful. It is, it's a it? It's an apple caramel and white chocolate crumble cupcake. Yes. Oof. So okay, I, I took inspiration from Suvarna, and my creation is all of that in a cupcake. Awesome. <laughs> Why awesome. not? Your because cupcakes are the best, so I can't <laughs> wait. Okay, so while I get going on this, you're going to start with the caramel apple. Uh -huh. We've just taken some apples and cubed them into small cubes. You don't want the cubes to be too big because they're not going to cook for very long in the oven. So right. you want to give it a little bit of help in terms of the cooking. Yeah. And then you're just going to mix in some caramel. And you want to peel the apple, right? Yes, definitely. Okay, cool. And then if you want to do it ahead of time, just uh, pop it into a bowl of water with a little bit of vinegar. That'll stop it from browning. So you mix ah. the apple. We're just going to cream up some of the butter and sugar in here. Okay. So with the creaming process, you want to do it for as long as possible till it's light and pale. And pale. It takes about five to ten minutes. So it's quite a process. So okay. I'm not going to get to do it all right now, just so mm -hmm. that we can show you how to get to it. And okay. then one egg at a time. You want to add it so that it has time to incorporate and that the mixture doesn't split. Yeah. So we're just going to add one. Okay. Just crank up the speed here a little bit. And of course, you can be part of all the action for the full recipe and shopping list. Go to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. <laughs> okay, cool. Is that it? Do I mix anything into this? No, that's good. Okay, you want to mix the dry ingredients for us. So we've got our flour here, uh -huh. some cinnamon, okay. and then some of the baking powder. Some baking powder. You can just sort of whisk it, just Gently. incorporate. You're just, you're just looking to mix the dry ingredients so that you don't have to overbeat the batter on the mm. side. So 
just like I said, we don't have time to, to cream the batter completely. Yes. So you're going to alternate with me here. I'm going to go for the buttercream, a nice thick buttercream, okay. uh, buttermilk. Okay, and I'm going to add a little bit yeah, at I'll a go time. Half, half is perfect. And then I'm going to add just alternating stages, the rest of the buttermilk. Uh-huh. Just makes for easy incorporation. Is that normal buttermilk? Normal buttermilk. Yeah. You can buy it in store or make it yourself. Just add a little bit of vinegar to milk and let it sit and you can see it starts to curdle and separate. Oh. Okay, then you can go for the rest of that. Yay. Okay, cool. And then we're going to add in our caramel apple. So we're not going to overbeat here. We're just going to mix it until it's incorporated. And then we're going to fold in. Do you want to just it's add that so in yummy. here? yummy. Okay. All of it? Yeah, go for it. You want to get it all in there. And you're just going to mix that up so that everyone gets a bite of caramel and apple. And then I'm mm. going to leave you to this. Okay. And you just spoon that into the, the tray that we've lined with some cupcake Okay. There is the spoons of there. We've lined with some cupcake holders and you want to fill it up to about sort of three quarters. Okay. Because it does bake up a little bit and you want space for the, I'm going to stretch over here. For all the yummy goodness chocolate, you're going to put on top. The white chocolate ganache. So all we've done is melted some of the Lindt Swiss Classic white chocolate. Right. What we did is we, we heated up the cream, poured it onto the, the chocolate the and chocolate. then that melts it. And then pop it into the fridge and then put it into a piping bag just because it's easier to, to pipe. Is it easier to pipe? <laughs> it is. Otherwise you can just spoon it over while you don't believe it. <laughs> well, because I've tried piping before and mine always just comes out a bit like, you know, amateur. <laughs> it's just easier. It is, this is quite a, a wet ganache. So oh, yeah, if you've got space easy. for for the ganache. Oh, lovely. And then the crumble part is an oat crumble that we've just made over there. Oats, butter, sugar, and a little bit of cinnamon just to kind of add a bit of spice to our a caramel apple wow. and you just mix that in a food processor until it's kind of like a, a sandy sort of texture okay and then into an oven until it's nice and golden like this right and don't forget all of this information is on our website the full recipe and shopping list and all your measurements afternoonexpress.co.za yeah we have kind of skipped through a whole bunch of stages yeah. here just because i'm so excited about <laughs> decorating them so i thought let's focus on making the cupcakes okay. and then just decorating so to top it off our crumble and then if you can help me over here mm -hmm. more chocolate because more chocolate. We can. so a, a piece of the the lint swiss classic on top and that's going to really finish off our Caramel apple, white chocolate, crumble, cupcake. <laughs> Yummy. So do I just break it into little pieces and then yeah. plump it on the top? We can sort of a piece each. Fair is fair. Fair is fair. <laughs> okay. Do you want it? Let's Let's grab that. Share. And then just top that onto the ganache. Oh my gosh. Yum. This is amazing. So the ganache, if you leave it at room temperature, it is going to melt. But that's kind of cool. You get that melty chocolate Gooey, on top. Pudding yeah. yeah. So okay. you can eat it with a spoon or just scoff it all down as quick as possible. <laughs> Thank you so much, Claire. It looks absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to dive into it. <laughs> People always ask me how they can get their hands on the Lint creation, and I tell them it's quite easy. All you need to do is SMS the keyword Lint and your name to 3378, and you could win an entire creation hamper. And while we're at it, we're going to throw in a Yappy Chef online course as well. So simply SMS Lint and your name to to double three seven two eight to win. Don't go away. After the break, Nicholas and Kuna performs for us. Surrender to indulgence. Which will you give in to first? Creation from the Lint Master Chocolatier. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, in case you haven't already got your tickets, the 5FM Joburg Live Loud is coming up next weekend on the 12th of September at Marks Park Sports Club in Emmerantia. South Africa's top recording artists from across the country, including AKA, KO, Ricky Rick, Freshly Ground, The Parlotones, Jimmy Nevis, the list goes on, will all descend on what promises to be the event that will kick off the sunny season with a bang. Tickets are on sale at Copy Ticket, and you can find more information on 5FM .co.za. Don't be the one that's left behind. Book your tickets now because it's going to be an incredible day out. And we're about to live loud right here on Afternoon Express with Nick Soul and his song called Over You. But when I hadn't played 
with your innocence, your innocence, girl. I promise I will marry you, girl. He's a felon. comfort you Dude. with this absolutely beautiful frittata. It looks amazing, by the way. But did you not get the memo? We're a loft, hey? So house music, it's not a, it's a loft, not house. <laughs> so I don't know whether you got that in memo or not. <laughs> I think I'm going to cut this thing up. Does anybody want to taste my frittata? Because yes, I slaved. Did you, it did you make it? Guys, you saw me make this. What do you mean? Yeah, he was a kitchen hand. No, 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 and so, Nick, is your whole album uh, housey like that? It's uh, in between. It's very housey, Afro, and a bit of soul. I had uh, yeah. Bushi tell me that she was saying that you wrote that song because uh, potentially there was some drama with you in the series. Mm. <laughs> no, he's not over the series. He's not over the series. Oh, okay. That's why like, yeah, Carla means I'm just, oh. I'm just I'm crying. I'm just crying. So this song wasn't dedicated to you, Bushi. Well, I mean, hey, maybe it's because we are on in television. <laughs> I don't want to say, but it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't expose anybody. Cool. Come on. I'm pretty good at making this thing look That's neat, awesome. but there you go. Hey, awesome. thank you. That looks lovely. You guys, pop your plates on that side. Let's start with Nicole. To so all, all our guests, thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Thank you for having and us. And have a good weekend. Loved having you. Yeah. yeah. And of course, don't forget, for all our chocolate lovers out there, to SMS Lint and your name to 3378 for a chance to win that amazing hamper. Have yourselves a splendid weekend. We'll see you next week, same time, same place, on Thursday. Three. Happy, eating. Happy eating! Next week on Afternoon Express, model and actress Tanya van Gran chats to us about living on purpose. 
We celebrate International Literacy Day with some of South Africa's top authors and renowned local actor Terence Bridget joins us in the loft. Another feel-good production.